I want to welcome our, our pastor in Zimbabwe, Apostle Cosmas. Yesterday, my goodness, I listened and I was so blessed. And uh, please, can you take us to the next level? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Apostle Newton, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, without taking much time, let's get ourselves into the word. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter number seven. The book of Romans, chapter number seven. We are still under the same, uh, using the same scripture, uh, Acts chapter number three, verse 19, where Peter is saying, repent and, and, and be converted so that seasons of refreshing can come from the presence of God. But this morning, I want to share from the book of Romans, chapter number seven. I'll read from verse number 15. It says, for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I, I, I will to do that I do not practice. But what I hate that I do, if then I do what I will not do, I, that which I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. Verse number 17. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells for to will, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Verse number 19, for the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Let me read verse number 24. All wretched men that I am, who would deliver me from the body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then, with the, with the mind, I, am, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen. I, I want to speak to you uh, uh, briefly this morning. I know uh, we are living in different times, on way, wherever you are, maybe it's evening or it's morning. But I want to share briefly on this message that I've entitled, Dealing with the Man in the Mirror. Ye yesterday, we were talking about the power of sin. But this morning or this evening, I want to talk to you about the man that you see when you stand in the mirror. The man that you look at when you stand before the mirror, that is the man I want to talk, to talk about this morning. You know, when you look at what Paul is saying here, Paul is sort of saying uh, it, it, there are two people that are living in one person. There is a man that wants to do that which is good, but at the end of the day, that which he wants to do is not what he wants to end up doing. And then the things that he doesn't want to do, those are the very things that he ends up doing. So in other words, in each and every person, there is a twin person. Amen. They, you know, in other words, you, 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 you are living as, as two people in one person. Amen. There is an individual that wants to do good. But at the end of the day, that individual has no power to do those things. And then there's an individual in the same person that don't want to do things that are not right. But at the end of the day, that person ends up doing the things that are not right. Amen. That's why I'm saying this morning, we want to deal with the person that you see when you stand in the mirror. Amen. The person that you, your own, you know, you alone knows. You know, the person in the mirror is not me that knows it. Even your pastor, even now the bishop doesn't even know. It's only you who is able to relate to that person that you see when you stand in the mirror. Amen. The, the person that you are, you know, when I look at people, we, we have two faces. We have a face for private life, and then we have a face for public life. You know, what I do when I go outside is totally different from what I do when I'm at home. You know, when I go outside, I, there's, a, there's a picture that I want everyone to see. You know, there's a picture that I want everyone to, to relate to. You know, but when I go back home, you know, it's sort of like I take off that man that I was in the public and put on another man that, 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 that begin to live in the private, amen. That's why I am saying we need to deal with that person 
that stands before the mirror. Amen. You know, we are not longer interested about the person in the public uh, uh, scenario. We are looking at the person that is there when you are by yourself, when you are in your inner, in your inner closet, when you are in your bedroom, when you are in your, in your home, when you are by yourself. That is the person we want to talk about. Amen. Because that person, you know, you know, prayer, ladies and gentlemen, is a lifestyle. You know, what you do in your prayer closet is, is greatly affected by what you do before you go into your closet. It's greatly affected by what you do when you get out of your prayer closet. Amen. Prayer is, is not determined by, by just what you say in your prayer closet, but prayer is also determined by what you do before you get into the place of prayer. You know, when you look at Adam, the story we shared about yesterday, when you look at this man, this man privately, he entertained the devil to a place whereby when he was now supposed to come in a meeting with God, when he was supposed to come in a place where he was supposed to fellowship with God, this man had no longer had power and authority to stand face to face with a holy God. You know, what you do in your private life greatly affects what you do when you get in your prayer closet. Amen. You know, so many people, we saw yesterday, so many people, when we stand in our prayer closet, we lose the power and the authority. Why? Because what we were doing when we were outside the prayer closet is greatly affecting us. You know, we realized yesterday that sin takes you out of the presence of God. It makes you fearful of God. It, it makes you fearful to come into the presence of God. Why? Because you end up feeling unworthy. You end up feeling unwanted. You end up feeling, you know, you know, you know guilty because of what you've been doing in your private life. So this moment, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to deal with that person that you see when you look into the mirror. That person that is the real you, the one that we see you outside, that is not you, but the person that you are in the private, in your private life, in your private home, that is you. You know, one thing I've learned in life, there are people that can become very successful in public, but very much failures in private. Come on, Sabbath, are you still here? You know, you, you, you can become a very successful businessman in the, pro, in the public scenario. You, you can become a very, you know, successful pastor. But when you come into your private life, which is more important, you know, God is not interested about your public life. That's why when you read scripture, at one point, Jesus said to the Pharisees, you know, you, you, you Pharisees, you, you are whitewashed the tombs. Outside, you look beautiful, but deep down, you carry bones of, of, of dead men and women. You know, in, in, in private, you, 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 know, you are not worthy to come in my presence. You, you need to deal with the person that you are in private, because that is the person that makes you either effective or ineffective in prayer. The person of the things you do when you are by yourself, those are the things that makes you either effective or ineffective in prayer. Paul is saying, in me, there are two people that are living. There's a man that wants to do good, but I don't do those things that are good. I end up doing the things that I don't want to do. I hope you and I, we can relate to what Paul is saying here. This is a struggle of every man. This is a struggle of every woman. This is a struggle of every Christian. You know, the things that are good, you know them, you want to do them, but at the end of the day, you don't do those things. What else? You end up doing the things that, that you were not wanting to do. There are two struggles in our lives. The flesh is, 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 you know, is a fighting for dominance. The spirit man is a fighting for dominance. But listen to me, the Bible says God is spirit. And they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. You know, the more you feed the spirit man, the more you feed the spirit man, the more the physical man or the flesh man ceases to dominate. But so many people, we are feeding the flesh to the extent that the spirit man has no power and no authority over our lives. 
That's why when you read the Bible, say Paul at one point says, I beat up my body that after I have preached to everyone, I may not be a castaway. You know, you know, the thing, ladies and gentlemen, is not about what you do in public, but it is about what you do when you are on your own. Paul is saying, I beat up my body. I bring it to submission. I force it to do what God wants it to do so that after I have finished everything else, I will not be a castaway. You know, Paul is saying, I, 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 I no longer submit to what the flesh wants and its desires, but I submit to the Spirit of God. You know, there's a law of the Spirit and there's a law of the flesh. The flesh and its desires is forcing me to move away from God. But the spirit man is struggling for dominance. Why? Because so many Christians, we are taking more of our time feeding the flesh. The Bible says when you read Romans chapter 8, verse number 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, you know the, the, the carnal mind wanted to control. That's why at the end of the day, the, the, the things that we do, you know, we, 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 like I said yesterday, we end up seeing them as our weaknesses. Why? Because we are trying to cover up the sins that we are doing. Every individual, every man, every woman need to look at that man in the mirror and begin to deal with him and say, no, no, no. You know, Jesus Christ must reign in me. And Paul is saying, oh, wretched men that I am, who would deliver me from this body of sin? Only Christ Jesus has the power, only the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to cover your sins, has the power to deal with whatever that you are struggling with in, in, your, in your life. You know, I've seen that there are so many Christians that have been in church for so many years, but yet they are still struggling. They are still struggling with things. You know, they, they, they are still struggling, but when they go outside, they, 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 they portray and show a picture that everything is okay. You know, I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, you can lie to people around you, but never lie to God. Why? Because the Lord knows your heart. He knows what you do in secret. He knows what I do in secret. He knows the kind of lifestyle that I do. You know, our desire at the end of the day is that we want to be effective. We want to come to a place of revival and refreshment in our lives. But the only way we can do that is when we begin to deal, number one, with our characters. Begin to deal with those things that you alone knows. Even sometimes you're married, your wife doesn't even know what you do in private. Am I talking to someone this morning? I hope I'm not making uncomfortable today. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You know, you know, sometimes even your wife, even your husband doesn't know the things that you are struggling with. Character issues. You know, what they've destroyed in the church today is because there are certain things that we have not dealt with. Things that deal with our character. Things that we look at, things like integrity. You know, when you look at the Bible, you know, the book of Proverbs, the Bible says, uh, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Proverbs 22, verse, 20, verse number one. Ecclesiastes chapter number seven, verse one says, a good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. You know, Paul, you know, when you look at these two scriptures, uh, they, are, they are saying, you know, you know you, your, your character is more important than what you see and you portray when you go outside. You know, the person that you are in private must be the person that you are when you go outside. We, we no longer want to see two-faced Christians, uh, but we want to see one-faced man and woman that, that stands up in their position and say, this is who I am. But the only way we can do that is when we begin to deal with the issues that we do in our private life. Can I ask you a question this morning? Are you proud of the things that you do when you're on your own? If we're going to say, if we're going to say, put, 
I if you're going to say this morning, put them on, 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 on Facebook, put them on Zoom. Are you going to, sh to show us the things that you are able to do in private? And you know, are, are you really comfortable with your private life? The things that you are you do on your own when you are by yourself, are you comfortable with them? Because those things are the things that affects your prayer effectiveness. They are the thing that affects you when you come in the presence of God. The little things we do by ourselves, the small things. You know, I'm talking about integrity, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are looking for men and women that, 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 are, that, that remain strong and standing truly and truthfully and honestly before God. You know, when you look into the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11, the Bible says, lest certain should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The another version says, so that we do not be outwitted by the devil. You know, so many people, the devil has outwitted us. The devil has taken advantage of us. Why? Because he has entertained us with these small things to a place that when we come in the presence of God, we become ineffective. You know, so many people, they struggle when they come in prayer. You know, they feel the happiness. Why? Because their private life is affecting them when they stand before God. Ladies and gentlemen, deal with those small things. You know, at one point, David said, where can I go from your presence? If I try to hide under the ocean, you are there. If I make my bed under the sea, you are there. If I say, let me go into the skies, you are there. Listen to me, you, there's no place where you can go where the Spirit of God cannot see you. And the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro upon the earth, seeking they that are pure. Ladies and gentlemen, deal with that issue. Deal with that character. Deal with that thing that you've been allowing for, for years, that, that, you know, that, that you've been nursing. You know, so many people, we have got wounds that are healed outside, but inside, they, they are still, they are still fresh. We have got sinful things. You know, we have got things, you know, we have put, you know, we are able to put on bandages. But listen to me, you can never put a bandage on a sin. A sin is a sin and it must be cast off. Something that is not godly must be removed. Don't put band-aids, don't put bandages, don't put medicine on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a fleshly wound. Deal with it. Deal with your heart. You know, when you look at David, at one point, this man, his public, you know, his private life nearly destroyed his public life. At one point, you know, instead of him going to the battle, he take up, you know, he, he came to a place where he, you know, he, he fell for, for, for Uriah's wife. And guess what? He slept with this woman. And at the end of the day, he killed the husband of this woman. And God had to come back and, and, and whatever he did in private, God had to announce it in private, in public. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Begin to deal with those small things. You know, the character issues. There are certain habits that we, we, are, we are entertaining. You know, when, when you look at, at, at Songs of Solomon, chapter number two, verse number 15, Solomon says, catch us the little foxes that spoils the vine, for the vines have tender grapes. Catch us the little foxes. Ladies and gentlemen, those little habits those little things, the things that you think, no, 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 these are too small. Those are the things that are destroying the harvest of your prayer life. Those are the things that are destroying your future and that are destroying your destiny. You know, Solomon is saying, catch us the little foxes. Let's deal with the small things. Yes, this morning they eat one grapes, but tomorrow they eat another grapes. So the following day they eat another vine. At the end of the day, the whole vine of the whole harvest is destroyed. That is small thing that, that acts as if it's nothing. That is what God is saying. Deal with it. Deal with those small things. Deal with the little foxes that you've allowed to grow in your life. 
the little folks that have given privilege and dominance over the affairs of your life. The things that you alone you know, no one else knows, is you. Deal with those things. Hello, somebody. You know, when you're doing those things, you're on your own. I'm saying deal with those things. The things that, you know, they are the things that are destroying your prayer life, your prayer effectiveness. Paul, you know, you know, Solomon is saying, catch us, the little foxes. Catch us. For they are the ones that are spoiling the harvest. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing I've realized, God answers prayers. When people pray, God answers prayers. The problem is not with God, but the problem is with you and with me. Until we are able to deal with ourselves, you know, so, many, so many people, so many Christians, we end up blaming God for unanswered prayers, not realizing that we are the source and we are the reason why our prayers are not being answered. You know, God is faithful. You know, when you read the Bible, it says, to the faithful, I show myself faithful. To the trustworthy, I show myself trustworthy. God is faithful to answer you. You know, that's why the Bible says, call unto me and I'll tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. He's ready to answer you. But the issue is this, ladies and gentlemen, have you dealt with everything that you are supposed to put on the altar? The Bible says offering our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service you know, of worship. Have you offered everything? Have you offered your character? Have you offered the things that you've been entertaining? Have you released them? Ladies and gentlemen, the things that you do in private. Can I ask you a question this morning? Will you be comfortable to give me your phone for two days? Will you be comfortable to give me your phone and your password for two days? <laughs> Will you be comfortable if somebody would get hold of your iPad, get hold of your, of, of, of your, of your, of your, you know, listen, will you be comfortable if somebody get hold of your laptop and begin to see the things that you are able to see on your own? Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to deal with the thing that we are supposed to deal with. Yes, you can be a worship leader. Yes, you can be a leader. Yes, you can be an elder. Yes, you can. But there are things that have been entertaining in your life. Begin to deal with those things. We have allowed the devil to take advantage of our lives. We have allowed the devil to allow us, you know, you know, you know the, 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 to, we have become too much religious to a place that we know all the jargon, all the Christian lingo, but deep down we are crying, deep down we are suffering. There are things that we want to, to, to release. But the problem, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says confess your sins one to another. In other words, they release, you know, speak out what you've been doing. You know, go to God and say, God, help me. I'm struggling with this thing. Help me. I'm struggling with these issues. God, help me. I'm struggling with lust. I'm struggling with jealousy. I'm struggling with unforgiveness. Lord, I'm struggling with anger. Go to God and say, God, I'm struggling and let him begin to help you to deal with those little things. Because those are the little foxes that are killing and destroying your harvest. You know, every time a man and a woman go on the prayer closet on their knees to pray, God is ready to answer. But the issue is, you know, have you developed the capacity where you can be in a position to carry the blessing of God? You know, God is a holy God. And when he operates, he operates in holiness. When you read the Psalms 24, it says, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can stand in the presence of God? Who can come into Mount Zion? Except him that have got clean hands and a pure heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let's allow God to begin to deal with those little things that you are not proud of. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid to approach God. People, when they hear what you've been doing in private, they condemn you. 
People, when they hear what they've been doing in your private life, they laugh at you. That's why sometimes it's very difficult to go to a brother. It's very difficult to go to a sister and say, my, my brother, I, I'm struggling in this area. I'm struggling in this area. You know, you know go, go, go on other days. You know, we are afraid to do those things. Because I know the moment I go to Pastor Lohan and say, Pastor Lohan, I am struggling in this area. I'm, I don't know what Pastor Lohan will do, go and do with the information that I give him. And at the end of the day, we begin to bottle in things that are in our, in our lives. We begin to struggle with those things. But listen to me. Men, they can condemn you. Men can judge you. But there's one man that will never judge you. His name is Jesus Christ. This morning, I've not come to condemn you. I've not come to, 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 to make you uncomfortable. But I've come to make you realize that there's a man in the mirror that you must deal with. You know, the Bible said, now there is no longer any condemnation to, to those that I cry Jesus. You know, the Bible says, who condemns me? Not even Jesus condemns me. What is he saying? He said, come as you are. Be honest with God. When you confess your sins, be honest with him. Release everything. Tell him everything that you are. You know, show him everything that you are. Say, God, God, I'm struggling with this area. Help me in this area. Holy Spirit, help me to overcome this area. People, they condemn. People, they laugh. But Jesus say, come as you are. Come as you are. Today, even before I hand over to Pastor Newton, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying this morning or this evening, come as you are. It doesn't matter where you are, what you have done. It doesn't matter the thing that you are struggling with. It doesn't matter. Don't run away from God. Don't move away from the presence of God. Don't feel uncomfortable from the presence of God. But bring yourself back and say, God, I need you in this area. I'm struggling in this area. There are little foxes that are destroying the vine, Lord. There are little things that are killing my harvest. God, help me. Come as you are. Open up your heart to him. Release yourself to him and let him take over. In the next few minutes before I hand to Apostle Newton, wherever you are in your home, wherever you are maybe in your car, I want you to open up your heart and say, God, I come as I am. Holy Spirit, search me. There's a scripture that I love from the book of Psalms. It says, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Search me, Holy Spirit. May he search you this moment. May he search you today. May he show you the things that you need to put on the altar. May he show you the thing that you need to destroy in your life. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. We exalt your name. Come on, let's begin to pray together. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, King of Kings. Blessed be your name. Lord, we come as we are. We allow ourselves and say, Holy Spirit, search us, search us, oh God. Search us, oh God. Know our hearts, oh God. My God, show us the things that are hidden in us. Holy Spirit, allow us, oh God, oh my God, to be put on my God. Oh my God, to, be, to, to, to show us everything that we are, Holy Ghost. Show us our lives. Show us the hidden things the hidden sins, the hidden habits of God that we have entertained for a long time, the thing that we've been feeding for a long time. Oh, King of glory, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor today. We thank you. My Father, my God, even tonight, we want to thank you. We honor you because you are God, O oh Holy Spirit. You are King. We need you, Lord God Almighty. There can never be a revival. There can never be refreshment until we lay everything down on the altar. We open up our hearts. We, we release ourselves before you, Lord. Begin to help us, Lord. Begin to show us, Lord, the things that we need to begin to deal with. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. Bless every individual that is on this call. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hand over this time to Apostle Newton. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. Apostle. Wow. Wow. My goodness. I've been writing notes. I've been writing notes. I've been writing notes. Notes. My goodness. That was so powerful. Can we just, every eye closed, you know, in the presence of the Lord, as you're still mute and uh, ask the Lord to search your heart. I know we, we're running short of time, but I just sense the anointing here. I sense the conviction right now here. 
Shala babo, raka shala baba babo Right now, just allow him just to search your heart. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Some of you need to repent. It's, uh, the man of God has talked about confessing. If God prompts you right now, you need to confess. You know, confess. There are some miracles which will never happen until you begin to confess and repent. Remember the word repent is metanoia, change of mind, change of heart, your actions, your ways. The problem is not with God, as we've heard tonight. The problem is with the man in the mirror. The problem is with the man in the mirror. And I know there's a lot of false doctrine, you know, that takes away all that. But we're going to come back to the place. God is holy. Come on. God is holy. God is holy. God is holy. The Father is holy. God, we just offer ourselves. You know, every time we allow sin to live in us, we give the devil the legal right. Some of us, the next breakthrough is just to repent. Oh God, we repent right now. We ask for forgiveness right now. Don't be ashamed. As, as, as Pastor Cosmos was speaking, I, the scripture that came in my heart is Isaiah 1.18. He says, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins are red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Come, let us reason together. He is our Father. He's calling you out. He's not here to condemn you. He's here to convict you. And I sense there's just been a conviction being released right now. It's something called sexual altars that needs to come down. There's something that's called vows that were made that were never fulfilled. They need to be, you need to begin to pray against that in the name of the Lord. Oh, come on, let's pray right now. Lift up your heart. Lift up your hands and just open up your mouth. It's all muted. No one can hear you. You're in the comfort of your home, in your car. Just ask him right now. Lord, search our hearts right now. The Babylonian spirit came to take away the brazen altar, the ability to repent. And Father, we turn. There can never be an awakening without turning, oh God. We turn our hearts to you, oh God. We turn our hearts to you, oh God. We turn our hearts to you, God. Turn our hearts back to you. Search our hearts, oh God, this week. Search our thoughts, Father. Anything that is not of God, Father, we pray, God, may you, may you just um, con con uh, convict us, oh God, and quicken our hearts, oh God, to release and confess, to confess and repent. Lord, in the name of the Lord, little foxes, God, we want to wanna kill the little foxes that come and spoil the vine, Father, in the name of the Lord, little foxes. Wrong connections, wrong friends. Oh, yes, God. Wrong friends. We disconnect from them right now in the spiritual realm. We break soul ties right now. Soul ties, we break them right now. Sexual soul ties. Emotional soul ties. Come on, in the name of the Lord. Oh, Shayara Baba Babo. Rakasata La Babosa. Restorobosta Have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, oh God. Have mercy. We pray and release, oh God. Any, anywhere where we've been wronged and uh, that we suffered injustice, Father, we forgive. We let go, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we cry out to you. We represent the church. We represent the bride of Christ, oh God. And Lord, may you begin to do a surgery in us. Do a surgery in our hearts right now through this week, oh God. Let nothing hinder, Lord, what you want to do, Father, in this month, oh God. The problem is the man in the mirror. The man in the mirror. In the man in the mirror. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. We worship you. Oh, glory to God.